Hey everyone, and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Camilla Claghorn, and today I'm going to be looking at Canvas Reflections. Yep, it's not written anywhere on the front, but it is really tiny on the back right there. Canvas Reflections. Canvas Reflections is the first expansion to the Canvas game. It's going to give us a couple new ways to score, a lot of things that we already know and like, but does change the gameplay up a little bit. So before we go too far, let's check out what comes in the box and we'll go from there. Right off the bat here, you're going to notice a big difference. And with Canvas Reflections here, we do get a board to play with. So you're no longer going to use the mat that comes in the base game. It will be replaced by this board, which will have the four sections up here for the scoring objectives, the silver tokens. But with the expansion, we also get gold tokens here, which are going to be three points each. Speaking of those ribbons, you will notice we do have the cardboard ones here, and the addition that I was looking at also came with the wooden components. Same for the inspiration tokens. We have the cardboard and the wooden ones on hand. This expansion also is going to expand the options here for your starting art cards, of course, you know, which with each person starting with three, and it is going to expand the scoring objectives here. All of this new stuff is going to be marked with a little R symbol so you can make sure that you mix it in with the base stuff, but can always tell it apart to pull it out if you don't want to use it. One of my favorite things about the base game, and they continued in it with this as well, is when it has the scoring objective here, if you need an explanation of how it works, you can always turn it over for the clarifications and examples. I love that. All right, but really the hook of this expansion is going to be these new cards that we get here, these acrylic cards. All of these are going to be shuffled into the base game, so you don't play exclusively with this, but we'll shuffle it in. And they're going to be double-sided now. On these double-sided cards, you'll see some of the swatches down here are going to have a little symbol, which show you that that swatch is going to flip to the other color on the other side. So for example, here on this one, it's faithful on this side and you have a yellow sun, but we're going to switch flip it and it's going to become blue. And at this point we have a blue sun for a farewell. This is really fun and really neat to play with. As you can see, there's a lot of different ones here. We have wrecked, which then goes to time, peculiar, which then is going to go to tragedy. And that's one of my favorite. It goes from a weird little magical frog to truly a travesty, wrecked ice cream cone. You can always flip these over at any time to look at the two sides, uh, a couple little different scoring mechanisms here. The symbol is going to stay the same. And again, it is just going to switch the swatch color again here, going from blue to yellow, for example. So there is that visual cue. You don't have to switch them. And finally, also to deal with these cards is how you can now do card selection. You will see you have eight options to choose from. As before, the first column is always going to be free to take from. And then from then on, you look at the columns and you need to add one inspiration token to each card in the previous column. So if I wanted to take lost here, for example, I would need to add one, two, three, four inspiration tokens. And then I could add lost into my hand. After that, to refill, everything from the right slides down and you refill from the top of the pile. Finally, this game offers us a signature style variant. In the signature style variant, each person is going to be dealt out a signature style card here, which is going to be an end game scoring personal achievement or scoring uh, mechanism. So these are kept secret during the game. We have two per animal, two per humanoid, two per metal, two per plant, two per wood. So each person is going to be dealt one of these, not recommended in a one to two player game, but in those higher player counts, you'll be dealt it, you'll keep secret, and you can check it, of course, anytime during gameplay. And that's about it that we have in this expansion. So let's head back up top and I'll tell you what I think works and um, maybe what doesn't. All right, so I'm just going to be very upfront here that I think this is a fantastic expansion. Some of the best expansions are those that don't try to recreate the wheel. They know they have a great game. It's been well received and they're not trying to make it anything different. They're just broadening it just a little bit, giving you a little bit of familiarity with it, additional options in case you've played it over and over again. So you're seeing more cards, seeing different and new invigorating, um, uh, scoring ways to score things like that but ultimately it's just giving you just more options more of the same I think that was a really good idea for this first expansion with canvas I think it does just that the new cards that it does bring 
open it up a little bit by one, giving you more options. That's, that's really good. And I was concerned at first that that was going to kind of slow down the gameplay. Is it going to maybe lead to a little bit more of AP? This was a really welcoming game where you have these four choices, choose one. Now we're going to eight. You're doubling that. Is that going to be a little too, a oh, little too much for new players here? And I didn't find that to be the case. I felt like it was it was it's an, it's enough without being too much. They really found that line there. Um, <clears throat> it is a little bit clunky at first. At, at first, maybe just the very first turn, be like, "Hey, how many inspiration tokens?" If I'm taking for the third row. Is that two, four, five, or is that just four? But once you explain that, it's it's not clunky at all. It's, it's really easy to pick up uh, the way they move down. So it's refreshing, but not all the cards refresh, just very, very well integrated into the game. The new ways to score, they go right in with the, with the original ones as well. I did make sure to play with quite a few of them, but also mix it into the base game to make sure they didn't have overpowered. And I didn't find that to be the case. Um, as always, I, I you know said it in the overview, I'm really grateful for the examples on the back. But I found that with those, I didn't have any questions on, on how those to go in. Um, my favorite part of this expansion, though, is the two-sided cards. And again, I had concerns on that. I was going in, is it going to be really clunky on having to remove the inspiration tiles to see what's on, or inspiration tokens to see the other side, to make sure that you know what you're getting? And the cards are so well designed with that, having that color and it shows you what color it's going to go to on the other side and knowing once you figure out that the symbols aren't going to change, the symbol is going to be the same, just that color swatch, which is offering that option is the only thing that's changing. You, you never have to do that. You know exactly what you're getting by looking at the board. And, and that's really neat. It is kind of sad just for me personally to leave the mat. I love the mat. I love that cloth that came in the base game. But I think that the board is very well done. It makes sense. It keeps things really organized, all kind of there together. And I think that that was really good. Um, my other thing that I really liked about the game is the signature style variant. So I've talked a lot about how I didn't feel like you needed to make the game any harder or kind of take it out of that welcoming category. And, um, but, but that being said, there are people who have played this a lot. Maybe you're not always looking for it to be a welcoming game. The signature style variant, adding those different ways to score doesn't do much. I think you can still put that in, in someone's, in, in someone who's not a gamer in their second or third play. And it's not going to feel overwhelming, but it is going to freshen the game just a little bit. If you are wanting for another way to think about scoring, so you have your ribbons and then you have your silver and your gold, and now bringing in this personal objective as well is really going to have, it's going to add to that interesting decisions. You know, this is going to get me this ribbon, but it's not going to go towards my personal objective and trying to set yourself up right to maximize those things together. I think is, is just a new, it's a little bit more depth. And I think that it is, it was very welcome for me. I liked that, that it had that option, but the game didn't need it either. So, I mean, it's just a couple little cards that are thrown into the game that give you that option, doesn't take up much space, but can very seamlessly be integrated with it as well. So I think all in all, there's some great decisions that were made in the design of this. It's really easy to incorporate into the base game. It's not essential, I wouldn't say, but I definitely want it. And I always want it. I don't think now that it's in my base game, I'm not going to take it out. I think that I could use it with new people coming into the game. And I think with people that have already played a couple times to throw in that solo style variant as well is very smooth. And I, I very much enjoy that. So with that, I'm going to give this canvas reflections an 8.5. That will be a seal of excellence. Until next time, thanks for joining me. I'm Camilla Cleghorn here at the Dice Tower.